are joined again today by Dr. Eric Rebeck, OSU Extension Horticulture Entomologist. And Dr. Rebeck, thanks for coming. I want to Thank ask you. you about our beloved crepe myrtle. We always sure. loved it because it was, you know, strong, low maintenance, and didn't have any real pest problems. Right. But we have a problem now with yes, it. Yes, yes, Crepe myrtle bark scale. Yeah. Uh, for just over a decade now, we've been um, dealing with this um, relatively new pest of crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle bark scale is a soft scale, so it's related to azalea bark scale, if you're familiar with that. So it's a, a, a plant sucker, mm -hmm. um, piercing, sucking mouth parts, feeding exclusively on the bark of the plant. Okay. So the thing about scales is that they actually cover themselves um, with kind of a thick coating that yes, they Im do. impenetrable. A yeah, bit. it's a waxy scale covering. Um, all the insect parts, if you will, are, are underneath that protective coating. So how do we know whether we have it, first of all? What are we looking for? Oh, you'll notice it. Um, <laughs> you're, uh, the, the nice uh, waxy scale coating, as you mentioned, it's kind of a cottony mass, mm -hmm. um, white in coloration. You'll see that all over the bark of the plant. Um, this is a soft scale, so it produces honeydew. Uh, so you'll see that sticky um, waste product all over the plant. Okay. You might see ants visiting that um, honeydew um, as a food source for them. Mm -hmm. And black sooty mold might be growing on that, uh, on that honeydew as well. Okay, so it could be black, it could be white uh, on there. And yep. It's just messy, basically. It's messy, yeah. It reduces the aesthetic quality of the tree overall. All right, and so also what will it do? You mentioned the aesthetic quality, not only what we see from it, but what's it going to do to the leaves or the mm -hmm. health of the plant overall? Well, they very rarely is there any documentation of it killing plants, uh, but they do reduce the aesthetic quality, as I mentioned, and as well as flower quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. So now we know we might have it um, based yes. off of those uh, symptoms. What do we do about it? If it's practical, smaller tree or shrub, not too many in the landscape, um, we can do uh, use a soft brush and a mild solution of uh, dish detergent uh, and just basically scrub them off the, off the bark, um, washing off any of the black sooty mold that might accumulate as well, any egg masses that are there with the female scales that we're removing. Um, in the winter time, you want to follow that up with a, an application of dormant horticultural oil. So okay. it's about a three to four percent solution of that horticultural oil in water. Okay. Get thorough coverage of the plant. And basically that suffocates them, right? It does. Yep. It suffocates them. And then you just want to continue that follow up with monitoring um, over the course of the next few seasons, uh, looking for any fr uh, further signs of trouble from any of the scales that might have escaped that. Uh, those two treatments, the combination of the, the brushing and then the horticultural dormant oil. Okay, and so what if I have one that's just so large I can't get up there and, and brush it and clean it and right. use soapy water? How do right. I treat that? Uh, call an arborist in, okay. in that case. Um, they will be able to um, uh, make, for instance, a dormant oil application for a larger landscape uh, tree like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they could do that uh, with a with a bucket truck. They have the specialized equipment uh, to get up and do that. We do not recommend anybody try to do that themselves, climbing a large ladder to right. reach 25, 30 feet tall um, areas of that plant to treat it or to or to scrub it. And a kind of a last ditch effort might be to create murder. <laughs> uh, cut it, cut it off at the base, and let and start over and let it regrow. Um, a lot of people do that anyway, and so that's a that's a tried and true, 100% um, effective if mm -hmm. you just cut it all, all the above ground plant material back and then it, let it regrow. But you still have to monitor for the potential for reinfestation on down the line. I mean, yeah, we know that crepe myrtles are tough, so they can handle being cut way back and they can also handle this pretty well, but it just lessens the quality of them. It, it does, aesthetically. absolutely. So where are we seeing this uh, pest? Primarily in Oklahoma, um, there's about 13 counties that are infested. Um, initially, we started seeing it in the southern um, portions of the state uh, because it was uh, predominantly found in the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. Uh, but since then, we've got 13 counties, and I'm getting most of my calls from the highly populated counties of Tulsa and Oklahoma County. Okay. Does yeah. it move through wind? or? Yeah, the scale it? crawlers, the dispersive stage, that's that first instar nymph. That'll get blown by wind, and so eventually, if, if there's an infested tree nearby, uh, yours could be next. All right. Well, thanks for giving us a heads up and also the treatment. Absolutely. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.